going to call the special select board meeting of February 26th uh, to order at 7 o'clock. Welcome, everyone. Uh, first order of business is approval of the agenda. Moved. Thank you, Farhan. Second. Thank you, Victor. Uh, I don't have any changes. Kathleen, any changes? Okay. Um, anyone else? No? Good. All right. Uh, all in favor of the agenda, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Approval of the minutes from February 11th, uh, select board meeting. Moved. Second. Uh, so moved by Farhad, second by Lindsay. Um, questions, changes, A discussion? very minor uh, line 139. Okay. Laura's name is spelled missing one of the letters. Oh. So many. You do what I do and skip over where, where you are in the agenda? <laughs> <laughs> Missing okay. S. Right. You said the 136. 139. Oh, 139. Oh, yep, missing the S. I didn't even see that. I did not see that either. Um, okay. Um, any other changes? Good. All in favor of the minutes, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Uh, citizen comments. Here for agenda. Sorry, I don't know who you are. Uh, Nicholas Wood, I'm from Vermont Great Act. Oh, okay. Read it, to read Welcome. Story. Thank you. Um, so n nobody, everybody's agenda. Okay. Um, Anne's not here. Are you covering for her? Is she coming? I'm not expecting her. Uh, simply okay. to say that you have uh, several uh, liquor license applications in your um as outlined on this spreadsheet, all inspections have been approved and conducted by the police and fire chiefs. Okay. Pleasure of the board. I move to approve all <coughs> renewal applications for first, second, and third class liquor licenses, outdoor consumption, and entertainment permits as presented by town clerk and Webster. I'll second it. Okay, thank you, Farhan Nick. Any questions? Comments? Good. All right, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Moving on. Um, Brent, Absolutely. would you like to come up? Thank you. The adapt Adaptive Reuse Project presentation. So thank, thank you very much. Um, okay. uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Brent Rakowski. I'm with Otter Creek Engineering, uh, the firm that is working uh, to assist the Speak in that thing there. Thank you, I can do that too. Yeah. Just, just pull it That's it, yeah. All right. Um, my name is Brent Rakowski. I'm with Otter Creek Engineering. We're the firm uh, assisting the town with the uh, first component of the, the reuse project. Uh, where we're at in our stage is, is, a, is a water and site improvement project is what we're calling it. Um, this is really the, the initial step in the, the reuse project that you'll hear from uh, from Nick here in a, in a few minutes. Um, as a component of this project, what we were tasked to do... You're going to have to scroll. It's ah, a PDF. scroll. Okay. <clears throat> All right. <laughs> oh, this is going to be a challenge. I apologize. Do you want me to do that? And yeah. You, you, can just, I, you can cue me. Okay. How about I do that? <clears throat> um, so... As I mentioned, we, we're assisting the town with, with uh, the initial steps in the redevelopment of this site. So this is at the, uh, the current town of Middlebury Police Station. So if you can click the next or scroll to the next. Um, and, and, and before I get to that, I guess uh, the project components that we were, we were tasked with is, was really to, uh, to take down or to demolish the existing tankage and structures that were part of that original uh, wastewater treatment plant that the town had at the current police department site. Uh, as part of that, we are also looking at opportunities to correct drainage issues uh, that are associated with, with what will be uh, potentially the reuse building uh, and uh, make upgrade, necessary upgrades to the water line. Uh, there is an age, aged water line that uh, that currently serves the that currently serves the grit building and a pump station building uh, down at the end of Lucius Shaw Drive, um, and then 
uh, as, again, as part of that, uh, we are looking to uh, coordinate some of these updates and improvements with the, the reuse project. So the reuse project would potentially have a water service to it. Uh, we're just making sure that while we're putting a new water line in, that we're putting in also putting in a water service to that building so that if the reuse project moves forward, they'll just need to connect on, they'll have a, they'll have a connection in place. Um, and then uh, what, what you'll see is, is that in, in terms of demolition of these tankids, tanks and buildings, there are some considerable, considerable voids that will be uh, there. So if you can imagine, uh, you know, a, a, a 50,000 gallon sludge storage tank, once you take part of some of that, uh, there's quite a bit of material that needs to fill that depression or void. So uh, what we've done is, is try and consolidate that and, and fill in much of the, much of the area around uh, and leave one particular location somewhat open uh, that gives the town an opportunity to actually waste material from other projects that will be happening uh, uh, this summer uh, and, and uh, save some money, I think. So if you can go to the next one, Kathleen. Uh, project schedule. So right now we are actually in the bid phase. We had a, we had a, uh, for this, for this decommissioning work or the, 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 the site improvement work and the waterline updates, um, we are in the, what's called the bid phase. So we had a pre-construction meeting uh, a, and which was a mandatory pre-construction meeting because of the intricacies involved, and you'll see that in a few minutes uh, or sh shortly, is um, we wanted a mandatory pre-bid because, there, because uh, of some of the, the particulars that are associated with it. There's a lot of piping inside the buildings. Uh, visually, you just need to see it to really, it's something you can't get from a plan. So just being able to go in there and making that mandatory also helps kind of protect some of the town's interests in terms of people saying, well, we put in a bid and now we either want to rescind it or need to make changes. You, you, can't, you can't plead <laughs> ignorance if you're actually there, right? Mm -hmm. um, so uh, we'll be opening bids this Friday. Uh, and then uh, after that, we will be putting together, Otter Creek Engineering will be putting together a recommendation letter that will go to the infrastructure committee and uh, if all goes well and infrastructure committee agrees with our recommendation, I believe that would go on to the select so board. So are the bids due on Friday or are you opening on Friday? We are opening them on Friday. They are okay. due on Friday. And also, yeah, we, we op would open them at the same time. Same yes, time. Yeah. Okay. due and open, similar, right, okay. Um, and then uh, we're hoping, you know, if, if all goes as planned, we're looking at a, an April 20 start. Uh, Obviously, that's dependent on the contractor who selected their schedule, but the intent is to have that site uh, demoed and ready uh, when the time comes for the next steps. Okay, so we go to the next one, Kathleen. Thank you. So um, this is, uh, you know, I'm sure most of you know, but Lucia Saw Lane, uh, right at the top of your screen, is is the Middlebury Police Department, the current building. Uh, to the left hand side is is the is what are calling the garage or the former garage. And then uh, even lower on the screen there, if you wanna scroll down, Kathleen, is uh, so the tankage that I talked about. So there were a number of different tanks that were associated with the original uh, wastewater plant. Tank one and two, the digester building, larger digester, sludge storage. So you can scroll to the next one. So those are, those are the, again, this is, so then moving on, this is the engineered plan. I've added some color to it, some flash, because engineering plans are quite boring. So, um, again, the, the town of Middlebury Police Department in, your, in the upper uh, right part of the screen on the left-hand side near the bottom is the garage, and then you'll see tank one, tank two, uh, digester building, the digester, and then the sludge storage. Now, the tank one, two, and tank two, the digester building, the digester, and the sludge storage are all part of what will be demolished, what we're looking to get demolished for this project. Uh, the digester building itself is two different shades of purple, for those of you that aren't colorblind, I guess. Um, the, the, the darker shade of purple is actually what is above grade. So that's actually a building if you're looking at it. Okay, next one, please. Um, and then, uh, 
uh, sorry, Kathleen, could you go back to the, the earlier one? Apologize. Uh, nope. Right there. And above the garage, on the upper part of the garage, you see a blue line. That is actually representing the, uh, the new water line that's going in. Okay, so we're connecting on uh, actually to the end of, of where the current water line is, and the thought is that we will be uh, replacing that pretty much in the same location because of all the other utilities that are in the ground, some of the unknowns. There's a lot of record information. Um, this site has a lot of history, so there's a lot of pipe in the ground that some folks aren't really sure where they are. Um, and and uh, so the thought was is to let's just put it back in right where it is. <clears throat> that way we know we're not gonna run into really any unknowns. Um, so that's the blue line represented there, extending down towards Otter Creek, the left-hand side of the page. Uh, next slide, please. And as I mentioned earlier, that blue line is continuing from the east or, or from the police station side on the right, heading to the left-hand side of the screen towards the river, uh, and we'll, we'll end with a hydrant uh, and also have new, or, or I should say, reconnected water services to both the pump station building and the grit separator building. Uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> uh, and then we'll just run through these because I want to let Nick have enough time. So uh, again, that's really that. This is just a blow up to show where things are. Again, I've tried to color code that so that we can relate to the next slide. Keep going, please. Um, similar thing, except a bit, bit more of a blow up. It's easy with a PowerPoint presentation to just keep copying and, and zooming in. So this is, <clears throat> this is actually uh, what's called the control building. Um, this is somewhat of a below, a below grade portion of the garage. And what we're doing with tank one and two, if you recall from the earlier slide, is we're actually partially demolishing these tanks so we're not completely bringing them to the ground. Uh, and a portion of those tank walls currently serve as the foundation and basement wall for the garage. Yes, right there, thank you, Dan. Um, so I just wanted to point that out. Mm -hmm. Next one, please. <clears throat> uh, and then this was the flashy part of my presentation, which was supposed to, you know, zoom in and fade. So the, the, this is the, the backside pictures um, looking towards the, the garage. So you'll see on, um, if you can, a little bit on the, the upper left side uh, is some vegetation. And then that is the, that is the garage in the background. Uh, on the right-hand side is tank one that is currently, f it, it does not have a top on it, but it's filled with this ooze of material. Um, uh, what we'll be doing as part of this is actually penetrating holes in the bottom of these tanks to allow groundwater to come and go. Um, and then similarly, this is uh, tank two that you see in front uh, on, the, on the floor part or the center of the screen. Uh, the concrete curb will be removed. So all tanks that are currently in place will be removed to, f to three feet below, grade, below finish grade. So the idea is we'll demolish them down to a certain level and then there'll be three feet of material over the top of them. Okay, so, you know, presumably if you're running a secondary electric for lights, doing some minor grading out there, you're not gonna, you know, end up hitting, hitting a piece of concrete. Uh, you can dig through there. And hopefully when the site is complete, it'll just be a grass lawn area. Nobody will know uh, any different. Um, yeah, a lot of, a lot of the same, I think one of, I guess if we can skip to the next one, um, probably the next component, uh, that you probably want to know a little bit more about is this digester building. So the digester building, uh, has an, as I mentioned, has an above ground portion and then a below grade portion. The below grade portion, uh, actually has a connector walk in the basement area, a connector walkway. Uh, which shown on the left-hand side with a, with a blue dashed line, if you can see that. Uh, that, that will ultimately be uh, sealed off to serve as the, as the uh, to separate the, uh, the area that's being filled from the active basement in the, in the, uh, uh, the garage. If you can go to the next one. Um, and that's, that's just a, that's just a, a, 
architectural view or a section view of, of the, the digester building, the portion that's above grade, and then the, the portion that's below with the new wall going in place. Keep going, please. Uh, there's just our structural plan that shows how that's gonna happen. So, um, new foundation wall going in place. And some photos of that above grade portion of the digester building uh, in the, on the left-hand side, upper left-hand side, you can just make out like you, if you one were to walk out the door that's, that's right in the foreground, that area that has grass on it is actually the roof of the basement below. Okay. And so this is getting demolished. That will be demolished. And the, from where the new foundation wall is towards like the, where the sludge tank will be filled. Correct. Yep, that's the intent. Um, it, so, so the, 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 the I should say, sequence-wise, the intent is that these, the tanks, um, tanks one and two, if you can recall from back the earlier picture, and uh, everything will be filled, with the exception of the digester building, um, or, or I should say that the digest, the intent is to have the digester building filled to last. So what we want to be able to do is, is clean up the whole rest of the site, and then what's ever left, if there's any material left, that would go in the, di the, the hole left by the digester. Um, the, at least our calculations at this point seem to indicate that there's going to be still a sizable void left uh, by the digester building, and that gives the town an opportunity for other projects that are happening in town to actually waste material in that location. Um, so they can actually just back a truck up and dump it in and, and uh, be done with it. Um, as opposed to a depression or a void that's elsewhere on that site, the access to it wouldn't, wouldn't, be, as, uh, uh, wouldn't be as favorable. So um, this, is, this is the sludge storage tank. This is one of the tanks, actually the tank that has a roof on it still. So that'll be demolished. Um, and not back in. And then, uh, in terms of uh, you know, we we did some uh, initial testing uh, because there there was uh, potential concerns of asbestos that was in uh, coating exterior coatings of tankage. So uh, at the recommendation of um, uh, KD Associates, who KD Associates actually did the remediation of the the original remediation of of this site. Uh, they recommended that we do some test pits to look on the exterior of the tanks to make sure that there was no uh, coating, which would have indicated the, the likelihood of, of maybe asbestos in that coating. So, um, sorry, I went a little long. I apologize. And you found none, right? I'm sorry? And you found none. And we, yes, we found none. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <coughs> and so I would just, so, sorry. no, sorry. I just want to comment. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. work is being funded with the remaining funds from the settlement of and um, final decommissioning money for the wastewater tr the, the old wastewater treatment plant. Uh -huh. So, um, and then once this work is complete, I think we can say we've finally decommissioned the old wastewater treatment plant. Yeah. So, thank you, so, Brent. Yeah, thank you. <coughs> Did anyone else have questions? Or? Just, no. just, just one. Um, First of all, I, I, I was looking at, I was putting some specifications together today for another project. I was wondering, this can include ignorance is not part of being there. Is that, is that, is, is that open source? You know, I, I, it's, you're, you're welcome to use I, it. Be, that, that, was, that was great. <laughs> so the other project you're talking about is probably uh, is it the excavation from the railway. So as you're well aware, um, mm -hmm. there are other water lines. Okay, and so, and the reason we're doing this is, you know, it's an environmental um, benefit, 
obviously, to finish this project, and it also gives us some use for the land. Yes. Hence its name, adaptive reuse. So. Yes. So before yeah. we can do the adaptive reuse project, mm -hmm. we need to do everything that Brent just talked to us about. Mm -hmm. It's basically the prep work for this project. Mm -hmm. I'm glad we're getting to it, and thanks to you, because you've been pressing for this. <laughs> Thank you. We're, I'm excited to see it mm -hmm. moving forward. Mm -hmm. So, Keep our yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Nicholas Wood. Thank you. Um, do you want to take us through the the adaptive reuse project part? Absolutely. Okay. So, I'm from Vermont Integrated Architecture. I've been working with Asha Nelson on this along with consultants like Brent Rakowski, Dan Werner at the town, Tom Hanley, police chief. Uh, ballot article 10 is the adaptive reuse project for the Middlebury Police Department. Um, Brent really identified most of those buildings on that site plan, but are people familiar with those? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Police? Okay, <coughs> very good. So as an overview, bond vote for uh, $850,000 for rehabilitating the former wastewater treatment facility buildings for use by the police department. That's the overview. Um, programmatic needs identified uh, and addressed by this project were need for a police cruiser garage, i.e. covered parking for the, for the vehicles, storage and support space, hazardous material storage, explosive storage, and to address heat loss at the meeting room of the police department itself. Um, early in the project, um, we uh, considered demolishing the buildings and starting fresh, but upon further analysis, the buildings were deemed salvageable, even valuable, and additionally, the buildings weren't then landfilled, saving the cost and waste of demolition. Um, and as the title says, we found that uh, particularly the control building is a very solidly built building with some value there. Um, okay, so the first building to look at, the sa former sand filter building, currently used as a garage, but not really particularly well configured for it. Um, so we we're looking at reconfiguring that, upgrading it um, in order to accommodate five patrol cars. Um, replacing the roof and putting in new overhead doors. So the reconfiguration involves putting the overhead doors on that south face, which is on the left-hand side there. So they all park parallel rather than coming in from the end, makes a lot more sense. Infill the existing overhead door. And the roof replacement, while we looked at just maintaining that roof, there wasn't really a good way to stop snow dumping in front of the doors. So we're putting a low slope roof that pitches to the rear of the building for that reason. Makes sense. Um, and we'll also give more life to the building. And but we're on that, well, on that slide. You know, so is the intention to heat that building or, or it's just a storage, right? Low level heat. There'll be some kind of modine units in there. Mm -hmm. um, and it'll be well, it is getting insulated. So there's insulated assembly going to the interior of those walls. Mm -hmm. um, low level heat's probably uh, 50 degrees, I would say. Mm -hmm. What I'm looking for is the ability to say that this actually helps um, in terms of rapid response, obviously, because the vehicles are ready to go, but it also reduces carbon footprint because you don't have to spend as much time warming the vehicles. That's true. Yep, I would agree with that. <coughs> That's what I want to say. Um, and certainly having some insulation on those walls will help with that as well. Um, Okay, oh, sorry, floor plan of that. I guess I basically said that. Five overhead doors there, new personnel door, all existing windows to remain, and uh, insulation around the <coughs> perimeter. That's it, really, in essence. Um, okay, so the former control building. Uh, is currently used somewhat as storage. Um, it's got a very leaky roof at the moment. Uh, so first order was uh, replacing the roofing membrane, 
and again, insulating those exterior walls, having the building operate better from that point of view, uh, replacing doors and windows. And when I say replace windows, the windows are currently boarded up. There was a consideration to block them in permanently, but we felt that in terms of future use of the building and also just using it day to day, it's better to have some natural light in there. Um, so yeah, putting some windows back in there, cleaning and repainting the interior, um, which has suffered a bit, particularly from that water ingress that's happened over time, but will now be solved. And improving access for the command vehicle. So that's a fairly valuable vehicle that the police department owns. Uh, it's currently a little bit too tall for that overhead door. They squeeze it in and they, they've already done some damage to the rack that sits on the top. So um, if you go to the floor plan, uh, I can point out that uh, at that third door on the right hand side, there's a zone where we are replacing, uh, demoing out the existing slab and putting in effectively a very low ramp just to lower the uh, threshold of that door and give a little bit more clearance for that vehicle to get in in a, in a better way. Uh, we've got forensics um, and training ability in that first bay and kind of storage and support space uh, in the what was former kind of office control portion of the building. Um, and you can see, I won't go into it, but you can see how this dovetails with what Brent was talking about. There are those digester tanks there that are coming out. And a key part is, well, we're in, for our project, we're not really doing anything with the basement. It was just not worth going there. Um, there is that foundation wall going in that Brent's talking about that effectively seals up that uh, basement. Um. Okay, there is a uh, storage magazine for the storage of um, ammun seized materials such as ammunition, flammables, explosives potentially, other hazardous materials. Um, that is to be placed at the top, uh, what are we saying, north uh, west corner, sorry, of the, um, what do they call that yard, Dan? The impound lot. Impound lot, thank you. Yep, that's it. <laughs> um, it's a prefabricated structure, obviously very burly, uh, sits on a concrete pad. That's about all there is to that. The hazardous storage, this is a, again, adaptive reuse of a, um, a building where a lot of the pipes terminated previously, some of those are still existing. Uh, they all get taken out um, and capped. Uh, we put in a ventilation, natural ventilation, through a kind of a vent turbine, uh, and uh, that allows for them to store hazardous non-volatile materials. So it's all about getting these th things in a safe place out of the police department. Um, okay, and the last item, um, infilling in the interior face of two existing section of storefront windows in the police department conference room with an insulated wall assembly. This was a project that was prioritised by the energy committee based on an energy efficiency audit of the police department. Um, I think that pretty much explains that. So there will be some natural light still, the top windows remain. The rest of it gets insulated wall, which would just help greatly with the, particularly the comfort levels in that room, but also energy um, usage. Um, okay, next slide is a summary of the budget. Um, so working with an uh, estimator, we have an estimated construction cost of uh, 734400 Design cost includes... Um, our fees, civil engineering fees are associated, with, I should clarify that, civil engineering fees are associated with our part of the project. There are some regrading uh, into uh, concrete aprons to those buildings, for example. Um, there's some connections to um, stormwater. It's a very small part of the civil, I would say, but there's a, there's a portion of that. There's some structural consulting um, to do with roof design and analysis of those buildings for structural st stability and safety. 
and some uh, MEP engineering as well. Um, and owner's cost, an estimate of miscellaneous other costs associated with the project. Um, so that's a total budget of $842,976. Um, uh, the proposal is to pay the debt service with local option tax, responding to community members' input by utilising cash on hand to reduce borrowing expense. Borrowing term will be minimised, drastically reducing interest expense. Interest on an $850,000 seven-year bond is approximately $179,000 less than the interest on a 20-year bond for the same amount. And that is all. So uh, just briefly for people that are at home watching us, we kind of just jumped right into the action, not giving any uh, introduction to how we got here. Um, the, in 2000, the wastewater treatment facility was relocated to the uh, northern uh, part of the industrial park, right on the New Haven town line. And we walked out the door and closed it and uh, have just left the buildings there until now and all of the support structures. And so we're finally uh, finding uh, the commitment to uh, address those issues and make the uh, storage good, usable storage space for the police department. Um, great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, questions? Yeah. Thank you very much. Good presentation. Welcome. Um, one comment, just wondering about, I think when Asher had come to infrastructure, he had some, like, you know, board um, views, you know, like front view side, you know, I can't remember what that Elevations called. Yes, of thank the you, buildings, elevations. Yes. Do we have anything like that that we could display at town meeting? We can certainly arrange that. Okay. Yeah. Um, if you could connect with Kathleen and um, if we could show some elevations of the proposed um, garage, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know that we need all the elevations, but maybe just front and something that shows the slope of the roof. Like I think if you have a front elevation, it wouldn't show the design of the roof slope. That's um, a good idea, yep. Uh, just so people can look at something out in the lobby before the meeting, um, that would be great. And I think Asher may have had some, had some boards when he came and talked to infrastructure. So it may not even need to be anything that has to be generated. We at that point we had, they were effectively just our drawings, but we did have, I know we showed this okay. site plan, for example. Um, regardless, we can um, arrange our drawings onto a board or okay. one way or another. We'll that, that would be great. No that problem. would be wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. Just something people could look at and talk about before or during or after the meeting. Um, thank you. Okay. We we'll drop something. <coughs> Questions? No, I just think it's useful to provide that history that Kathleen just did at the very beginning, you know, like when we're starting the discussion. It'd be good. And we can talk about it when we get into the, into the presentation. Into the town meeting. Uh, yeah, but Laura's comments about improved response time and decreased idling time during inclement weather may be things that would be good to add to those slides. So. I know, I know Tom has said that they have to run the cars more than they would like to just to keep mm -hmm. the ice off the windshield so when, right. the, when mm -hmm. the call happens they can go. Yeah. 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 So those were out of great just being points. In a dry space. Adam. Could yeah. you experience that with public works? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Machines. Okay. Without reducing the font size. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, thank you. You have to watch Appreciate how much it. we add. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank you both for being here. Okay. Dan. Uh, flood, <laughs> flood resiliency and water projects. Sure. Um, so Article Nine is a, a vote for the flood resiliency project. Um, so for the summary of this, uh, it's two, roughly a two million dollar uh, project in East Middlebury. Um, the first bullet is repairing the existing flood wall. That is just immediately downstream of the Grist Mill Bridge. 
on the on the uh, what's called the north side of the uh, of the uh, Middle Bay River. Um, <clears throat> so we repaired that that wall and then extended another 150 feet downstream. The cost of that is roughly a million dollars. Uh, second portion is to armor sections of the Ossie Road berm, uh, approximately eight hundred thousand dollars. That is further. Uh, to the east, it's a, or further to, further to the west, meaning downstream. It's, it's basically, um, if you went from the, the church and headed directly towards the river and then walked downstream, that's about where it is. So it's near the, the western edge of the uh, East Middlebury Village area. Um, <clears throat> portions of that berm have been er eroded sub significantly in recent years. So that, that is going to get rearmored, and then the other portion is removing some sediment from the chute entrances. There's one um, just a few hundred feet uh, downstream of the Lower Plains Bridge, um, and then there's an, another one uh, not quite as far as the, the berm location. Uh, needs to be cleaned out, and then there's several large bars of, of gravel. You can actually see them in the, in the photo uh, that are going to be cleaned out. So that cost is roughly two hundred thousand dollars. So Dan, the flood wall is right here. Yes. Uh, west of the gristmill bridge. Yes, and it'll be extended another hundred fifty feet further downstream. And the berm is right in there. Yep. At the end of Aussie Road. Yeah. In East Middlebury. Um, the the clean out cost of two hundred thousand dollars for the sediment. Can we expect that same sort of cost every time we need to clean out the chutes? Probably. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and so one of the things with uh, working for the state and FEMA was that um, you know we've always wanted to get in there and clean out the river and the pendulum's kind of gone back and forth. And so everybody's kind of getting on board. Well, okay, we will, so far, we will fund you, uh, but you, the town, have to commit to the, the clean out. And so what Amy and the river scientists have worked out is there's an elevation that will be set. Once we get to that point, it's time to clean the river out. Now, it all depends on how much it floods and deposits and so on and so forth. It could be 10 years, could be 20 years. You don't know. The agencies wanted a commitment from the town, which I believe the select board adopted, that they would, yes. they would mm -hmm. take that on. Right. So, certainly so not intended to be a, an annual or, or right. biannually yeah. thing. Or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, the project need is obviously East Middlebury is vulnerable to, vulnerable to flood damages. Um, the wall uh, took a real hard beating with Irene and actually in a couple other storm events after that just scoured the bottom of it. Um, and of course, uh, taking the sediment out uh, allows uh, more area for deposition and we have other smaller flood events. Um, so if we want to go to the bond vote page, um, we are still waiting final confirmation from FEMA that they are still going to uh, fund us for $1.5 million. Local match would be $500,000. Um, I submitted a clean water um, uh, application. Uh, it's CWSRF, State Clean Water State Revolving Fund application just a few, couple weeks ago. Uh, we started talking with the state, oh geez, maybe about a year ago. Uh, whether they might be able to help fund some of this, our share through their project. And they said, tell us more. So we submitted an application. If it works out, we could get 200,000 of our 500,000, but we don't know yet. But at least we put the paperwork in. I thought we did get final commitment from FEMA. They, 
approved the scope of the project. Okay, so we've made progress, but not necessarily final commitment. Okay. Correct. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> well, that would be good if we got that 200,000, that would be, that'd be good. So one of the, and we're going to talk about this when we get to the water funding too, it's important to relay to the voters that they, they need, we want them to, to pass the bond because having the bond allows us to get access to uh, that possible 200000 That's the way the, the state revolving funds work. They want a bonded project, knowing that there's a commitment and there's oomph behind the, the vote. For the mm -hmm. So further to that, part of our goal with all of these projects is to minimize the cost to the taxpayers and the ratepayers by accessing grants when possible um, and using other sources of reserves. Right. So current thought is that the debt service for the project would be offset by the local option tax um, receipts. service with yeah. local option yeah, yeah. tax receipts yep okay. so uh, one of the talking points is that bar the borrowing term which was uh, expected to be seven years um, interest on five hundred thousand dollars is about one hundred five thousand dollars less than a, a, a 20 year bond and could be much less than that if we're able to get some loan for or loan forgiveness on the uh, from the CWSRF Awesome. Fingers crossed. Okay. I like the pictures. Tells us why. <coughs> okay. All right. Next thing you want to go on to good. water. Any more thoughts on that, or we'll go on to the water project? Nope. Go, on. go ahead. Okay. Article 6 is. Uh, <coughs> Cross Street Bridge Fund Reserve for water system improvements. The idea is to use $1 million from the Cross Street uh, Bridge Reserve Fund for water improvements in the Court Square area. So we're looking at uh, intersection of Main Street and North Pleasant, or Seymour Street, um, Court Street to Court Square, down to Ca Cross Street and Washington Street from Court Square to Seminary Street. As, uh, you know, everybody needs to remind, re, be reminded of class one paving by VTRANS happens in the spring of 2021, and we're trying to beat that, um, beat that schedule. So, um, so the first phase. First phase is um, if you want to start at the Congo Church uh, area right there, we're going to go across <coughs> the street and then down the sidewalk in the green. Um, half of that sidewalk needs to be replaced anyway, and we don't want to be digging in the road. Uh, part of that road has a, has a concrete um, uh, structure to it, and there's just asphalt laid over it now. So we want to stay out of it. It's a pretty expensive excavation right there. So we're going to come down the sidewalk. There's some trees we have to, have to um, uh, move around. We've talked to Chris, met with Chris Dioli about that. He's okay with it with it, um, and then we're gonna come out into uh, the, um, so the South Pleasant Street, North Pleasant Street, Merchants Row, Court Square intersection, and then head up the, the south curb line, yep, uh, in the grass, and then um, from that point where you have your cursor, we're gonna have a boring done underneath Court Square, the road portion of Court, Court Square, into, um, into the square. There's a Norway maple that's kind of orangey brown in that lower right hand. Yep, mm -hmm. that tree's gonna come out. We've talked to Chris about that. Um, uh, so we're gonna do a, a boring underneath that road so there won't be any interruption to traffic. And then the water main would continue north easterly over to Washington Street. That's phase one. Um, I'll call it phase 1A. Phase 1B is continuing 
from that intersection down the parking uh, lane of Court Street all the way down to Court Street. That would be one, uh, one B. All the way down to Cross Street. Cross, Cross Street. Street, what did I say? Court, Court, Court Street. Yeah, Cross Street. Cross Street. Cross Street. Thank we you. knew what you meant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so the first part of 1A, we expect will start in September of this year. And then 1B would restart in the spring. The work would be done at night. Um, uh, engineers figure that that's going to be, and the contractors that it's kind of tapped for ideas, thought that would be the best way to do it, do it at night. A lot less traffic to deal with. You said, you said spring of next year, right? No, September. The, the first portion from like the Congo Church over into Court yep. Square would be in the, near the middle of September. Yeah, the 1B I'm talking 1B about. 1B would be spring of... 1A. 1A from the Congo Church would start in September. I know. I'm talking about the 1B. B. That's B. next spring, right? Yes. But you said the AOT is going to pave next spring also? Yes. So... It's going to be that. Yeah. So we've talked with them, and they're going to have uh, in their contract that the, contract, the state contract cannot be in this area prior to July 15. Okay. So that's summer. Yeah. So, so the first thing that will happen with the class, class one paving, which we believe is they'll be milling a lot of the road surface right off. So every, basically from the town line, the town state jurisdiction on 125 College Street and Route 30 down by the golf course, mm -hmm. all the way through town, route through the roundabout, um, across Cross Street Bridge and, and Main Street to where we stop with the bridge project is all going to get milled on Route 7 from North Pleasant Street, top of the hill by High Street, all the way down to Creek Road. So all that's going to get milled, probably the first thing that happens. But they have to stay out of that section. And there's curbing that's going to be done and catch basins uh, to be, you know, elevated and so on and so forth. So um, that's kind of the schedule of the Class 1 paving. Mm -hmm. um, and then in a subsequent year, we would do Washington Street, um, where we left off at Court Square, and that will get, go down to Washington f Five Corners, which is Seminary uh, intersection, Seminary Street intersection. So we're proposing to use, um, like I said, a million dollars from the uh, the um, uh, local option tax, and the rest would come from the Water Capital Fund. Um, the uh, part of this is the ask the voters to approve a bond vote or vote on a bond for 2.5 million. Um, it's a very similar to what we just spoke about with the Middle, Middlebury River. We have to approve a bond vote if we want to have access to the, the uh, DWSRF, that state re revolving loan fund for some possible loan forgiveness on that. So we're thinking that we would use, because that can be a two to three year process, that way we would, do, we would fund the portion, portion of the uh, Washington Street section, the last section, with a DWSRF fund loan if we can manage that. But you still have to approve the bond vote in order to get access to that. Okay. Um, some pictures of some main breaks. Uh, any questions on that? Nope. Well, wasn't there some discussion, Dan, of actually getting onto this court square stuff prior to the bridge work this year? Yeah, we talked about it, that maybe the time when, when um, uh, Merchant's Row was closed, that it would be beneficial to get in at that time because our contractor could be working there wouldn't have to worry about merchant throw traffic yeah but we talked about it with uh with the the state staff and contractor and the traffic patterns that they're going to need to get those pieces delivered is really you know going to create some havoc with an, another excavating company there so even though, because they need time to maneuver pieces. Some are going to come around from, from this side, some are going to come from this side, and it would be just better to just stay out of there. Right, okay. Yeah. 
So that's why we decided we just wait until September. Okay. Yeah. So, oh boy. <laughs> Got to do it. Yep. You know, it's like this is this is the problem across the country as a whole. Is we've ignored yeah, these yeah. major infrastructure things for so long, mm -hmm. and it's coming due. So, I, pr I really applaud the effort that everybody's been doing to get this done, and it will put us in a, a much better position in the future. And even mm -hmm. Powell, you know, Kathleen and Dan, mm -hmm. everybody's been looking at ways to help finance this. this you know, we're we're going to be better than a lot of other towns in the future. So appreciate this effort. Yeah, it's it coming right on the heels of the um, rail bridge project is obviously not ideal, but we've got to get the work done before the state paves, um, and we just we just need to make it happen. But just think, once the rail bridges are in and this water line is in and the roads are repaved, we're really going to have. You know, be in paradise. Yeah, <laughs> we're yeah. going to be in a good position, even yeah. as we think of ways that make the town attractive to future residents, future businesses. Mm -hmm. Stable infrastructure is real high on the list. And, right. and we'll have more to do. Don't oh, and, oh, we know we will. <laughs> so oh yeah, no, there's. <laughs> <laughs> it's not ending with this. <laughs> no, no, no I, I'm afraid it's not. But that's and, that's and good. Jen's project, the uh, grant that she'll, she'll talk about later, is getting some of the rest of the sidewalks in this area and the right. granite curbing done. Yeah. It'll, it'll yeah. downtown will look pretty sweet. When really we're done. Well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so any questions about no. related? Okay, no. so let's move on to recommendations from the infrastructure committee for the Route 116 Dow Pond uh, waterline bid phase agreement with uh, Green Mountain Engineering. Sure. Um, just a reminder, this project is for uh, replacing the water main along 116. We're going to start at the south end where the uh, uh, um, little building is um, across from Beth Dow's place, basically. Um, and we're going to go north to the deep culvert crossing that's at the end of Dow Pond. Um, as you know, that thing kind of sort of somewhat collapsed about a year and a half ago, and they had to lower the water in the pond, so on and so forth, so it wouldn't wipe out the road. Um, so this project is is out to bid. We'll find out Friday what the bid results are, um, but we'll need to ask you to approve an amendment number one for Green Mountain Engineering for the bid phase process. Um, this figure is $4,000. It's a not to exceed number. Um, they would, of course, bill hourly. Um, so um, we're well underway with the bid phase project, but that's what I'm requesting you to approve tonight. Um, okay. The state, FYI, the state has decided they will not do this project ne this year. They're just not, they're not just gotten to it as fast as they would like. Um, we're going to go ahead and do ours. They asked us to do that so we'd be out of their way. There is still a component in this project that would happen with the contractor who does the state work. This is all preliminarily to get our, our water main up to the point where that culvert work would happen. So um, anyway, I'm asking to approve amendment number one for Green Mountain Engineering. I'll move to approve amendment number one to the contract with Green Mountain Engineering for the Route 116 Dow Pond water line replacement project for not to exceed cost of $4,000. Second. Uh, thank you, Nick and Farhad. Uh, any other questions of Dan? Good. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thank you. Next is the Katy Road uh, arch pipe purchase. Correct. Um, so I'm requesting you to approve a purchase of, of the pipe arch for this uh, culvert. Num it's called number two. It's the further, furthest one east from Route 7. Um, the same company that we used, we did Halliday Road a couple, three years ago. Um, their proposal is, includes the cost of the pipe arch. It's a, um, it's a uh, six, inch, or six foot seven by five foot eight um, um, pipe arch. So it's like a squashed egg if you will um, and it's uh, about 50 feet long um, so uh, the town would purchase it directly from contact also included in the proposal is a installation 
um, of, of $13,000. So they send the crew up. Uh, our contractor digs the, digs the trench in the road, and then their guys get in there and put the thing together. It's just the most efficient way to do it. Um, it's not something contractors around here do very often, if at all. So uh, this is why we approach it this way. Um, so this project is scheduled to happen um, around um, the third week of June, fourth week of June. We cannot be in the stream bed until July 1. So we're trying to coordinate it that this all gets delivered and all set up to as soon as July 1 hits, we're starting to dig a, a hole in the road. So the road will be closed for about two weeks at that roughly around July 1st. So anyway, I'm asking to approve the, the, the quote here from Contact for $46,488 so we can get the, get the pipe ordered and scheduled. I'll move to uh, contract that. Okay. Everything you just said. Okay. Second. Thank you. Thank you, Farhad. Okay. Um, just quickly mention this is a sole, sur sur sole source purchase, but it mm -hmm. is a specialty purchase. Um, and we do have, obviously, like Dan said, a history with this company. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. okay. And you said the carrier would be closed for two weeks? Approximately two weeks right. in, in around July 1. Mm -hmm. And I should have said earlier, this is part of a, a Better Roads grant. Um, 60,000 60, of it is coming from the state, and the rest is, is our share. So around 100,000 will be town share. Town share. Uh, any other questions? So the businesses on there will already they know this is coming? Well, there really aren't any businesses on Katy Road. It's more of like Cores. a through. We'll, we'll have to put some electronic signs up letting people know the closure, et cetera. Yes. It's yes. inconvenience for it, people to cross. Yeah. It, it will be an inconvenience to go around. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we'll let, you know, Carrera know and Quarries know out there that people there's going to be that have period. have to go down to East Middlebury. Right. Mm -hmm. Susan. Can you go to the Elmer Farm as well? Yes. Who's that? Who's that? Elmer, Elmer Farm. Elmer Farm. Okay. They're just um, south of um, Katy Road on 160. Okay. Um, so good. Any other questions? Good. All right. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, uh, downtown transportation grant fund and better connections grant program application. Jennifer and Kathleen, are you? He's out here. Homework. It's a team effort. We know that. <laughs> so the downtown transportation fund is um it's a grant it's a 50 percent grant match program and the idea is to um, get a grant that'll help us construct sidewalk and curb um, at the limits of the um, disturbance area for the real bridge project so it's just taking the good things that'll be going back in the ground at ground zero and extending it a little bit further and dan selected the locations and it came out to about the right price so i'm writing the grant mm -hmm.
kind of thing here. This is the old diner. This is where the bridge project stopped, where I take Grand Curtain and the sidewalk around from the town hall theater and terminated it on uh, South Pleasant Street. This is where the bridge project starts on the green side and leaves the main trail. We're going to not do that, though, until the water line is in, though, right? Yeah, right. At least, so at least on the green. <coughs> yeah, we talked. We were talking with the bricky and trying to get a scout from them, and we don't have it yet. So. Okay. So I'll gonna be next gonna summer. be juggling a few <laughs> things yeah. there. So for bricky, he's gonna be doing the work then. Huh? He's gonna be doing that. Yeah. We have a proposal for that. Keep grinding going. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So pleasure of the board. I move to authorize the submission of a 2020 downtown transportation fund grant application seeking $200,000, including a $100,000 local match for a project to remove and replace sidewalks and curbing adjacent to the bridge and rail project construction area. I further move, should I second that first? Or uh, should we do those as two, Kathleen? I sure. Them. Okay. I'll second it. Okay, thank you, Nick. Um, any questions? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Um, I further move that the board sign the resolution for downtown transportation fund grant. Okay. Second it again. It's from Nick. And thank you. Uh, any other questions? No. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Great. Thank you, Dan and Jennifer. Uh, so, a Better Connections grant application. Yep, this is actually a Better Connections implementation grant. The Better Connections grant was our downtown master plan, and then um, the communities that receive Better Connections grants get a one-time shot at some free fund money to implement something from their plan or whatever they did with their Better Connections grant money. So, um, the, the only constraint is that it needs to be constructed by September. So it's like a quick turnaround kind of a thing, so it can't be too complex. There's $30,000 available to three communities. They're indicating that they're gonna split it evenly, so I'm applying for 10. Um, and after batting it around a little with the Planning Commission and some others, we were thinking um, a, a kiosk, an informational kiosk <coughs> at the Amtrak rail platform and covered bike parking at the Amtrak rail platform would be a good way to encourage people to be active and kind of meet some of the, the um, goals of the plan, such as you know improving bike ped accessibility in downtown. And I've talked to one contractor, I mean, I know we have to competitively bid it, but I've talked to one contractor who was super excited about it. I talked to Silver Maple and they were like, yeah, we wanna help, like, you know, you know, and I don't know, I think we can have a lot of fun with it, thinking about what kind of permanent signage goes in the kiosk and, and how it might look. So it's just a fun, feel good project. Um, and people will be able to see it right away. I know the platform might not be done by September, but the grant agency has agreed for us to just stage it elsewhere in downtown and then move it there afterward, and the contractor says that's possible. And I'm even thinking of you know what we heard from, from uh, you know people at the, the meeting we just had for the rail station saying, like, wouldn't it be nice if we could put a solar panel on top? So we'll be making it <laughs> strong enough to hold a solar panel in the future if we want, like an e-bike charging station or something. So we're thinking ahead as well. Okay. Of course, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I love that you would incorporate solar and electric charging as part of, the, you know, the... Potentially in the future. The potential, <laughs> yes. Um, so. Would you like to make a motion? I will move it <laughs> that we sign the letter of support for a better connections grant application. Is that it? Grant application or implementation grant? Thank you. Better. Um, um, to fund the construction of bike parking and a wayfinding kiosk at the new passenger rail platform. Second. Thank you, Laura. Was that a second from Victor? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Victor. Um, any questions for Jen? Good. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, great. Thanks, Thank guys. you, Vic. Thank you, Jen. Appreciate it. Okay. I'm only a little behind. Discussions and preparations for town meeting. So this is our opportunity to fine tune um, our assignments and the agenda for town meeting. Um, and also uh, review the draft of the presentation. 
Um, I'll turn it over to Kathleen. And I don't have anything to add to that. Uh, to note that uh, Susan Shashok, our moderator, oh, uh, town clerk, Ann Webster, uh, Chris English, uh, and I went to the auditorium this morning and laid out the stage as the select board indicated with the moderator on the left hand side of the stage looking at it and the select board presenter on the other side and that worked well the screen was unobstructed good um, angles for mctv anything to add susan hi susan hi. shashuk um, I don't have anything to add. Can you hear me? Um, just want to support what we went through today and see if anybody had any questions. Can you hear me, Victor? Hmm? I don't have anything to add. I just want to see if people have questions and support the layout that we were working on today. No? Today it's going to work. It's fine. So uh, I did ask Kathleen, and she did mention there's two steps, three. I think there's three th three steps, but there is a railing. Mm -hmm. There is a railing. Okay. Yep. And I'm more than willing to get up if if that. Well, I'll, I'll call you for one. help. No, I, I mean I, I don't like walking downstairs without a rail because of my knees, yeah. mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. it's just on the safer side. And um, uh, otherwise, I mean I could put on a show for uh, demonstrate and, um, my. When the audience skills, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. When the audience members speak, are we able to see them on the screen or? I don't think so. I think you're going to have all of your paperwork and yep. is going to be up. They're going to see. They're you're going to want them to see all of the information. Yeah, that's so on the screen. So the the program will be live streamed on YouTube and then taken from YouTube and put on the local channels. So they could, they could go out into the lobby and watch themselves on the screen. <laughs> I'm, I'm talking about us. Yeah, uh, you won't be able so to. So would I know who's talking behind, unless I turn around, right? It, and yeah. Okay. The nice part about it is, is I, I've been watching some of the old um, town meetings, and uh, Jim always had trouble seeing the select board members if they had questions. And you yep. guys will be in my direct line of sight, so if you have questions. But I also think you'll be off to the side. You should have a pretty good view of the room, okay. um, except for the people right behind you. But mm -hmm. Great. Well, I'm looking forward to giving it a try. Yeah, I think it'll be fun. Great. Mm -hmm. So do you have any questions of us or anything for preparation or just? No, I think Kathleen's going to finalize the names that I have to ask um, for permission for them to speak. But that's, that's probably about it. I think, every, I think we've covered everything else. It's just a matter of going through it. Mm -hmm. and, and there'll be some things we'll need to adjust that day, I'm sure. And, but I think everyone's been very flexible. So we've, uh, the assignments are in the draft agenda. Mm -hmm. uh, we've talked about some uh, potential backup plans and a little bit of shuffling. Uh, we'll get out a up-to-the-date uh, assignment list in the next couple of days. In the meantime, if you have any comments, questions, concerns about the presentation, uh, I have the notes uh, from the PD reuse project uh, that you gave me tonight. Please get them to me by noon tomorrow so that we can finalize uh, the presentation for posting on the website so there are no last minute snafus. Okay. Yeah, so that's <coughs> comments, suggestions, anything on this to Kathleen by noon tomorrow. Okay. So I really like the the format of the presentation, Kathleen, th that you've kept the font really big so people can see it from a distance, which we heard uh, people wanted. And I was just at the school board presentation and I had a problem seeing their presentation. So I like that we're making all this effort to really um, think through 
how we set things up and present things. Um, the other thing that I saw last night is, uh, is inconsistency in passing the microphone and people think that they can be heard, but you know, we really need to be sure that people do use a microphone when they're speaking and give them enough time to get to that microphone. So we did discuss microphones today. There will be three on stage, uh, hardwired, and two mics to be passed. Um, they'll have uh, justices of the peace passing the mics like to the year, audience. Yeah. Okay. And part of what I'm going to be saying about in, in the very beginning is talking about that of, um, you know, after I recognize you, please stand up, wait for a microphone, state your name for the record, and speak up so everyone can hear, mm -hmm. al along with a few other sort of housekeeping things. Mm -hmm. Just to, and I'll remind them as we go through. Okay. I only have one other small thing, and it relates to the town poll. Um, and we talked about doing a little overview of the website, but I'm not sure that we've really built that in, or is it logistically too clumsy to do that at this point, you know, to show the home page and a little bit of navigating the website. I'm not sure we need to do it, but you know, I know that we talked about it um, since it is a valuable resource and a lot of people may not know what's there unless mm -hmm. we walk them through a little bit. And I'm not seeing this as being more than two minutes. Um, so, so I wondered about that. I know that was talked about last year. So I just watched the meeting, so. <laughs> Is the, um, is the presentation going to be available online so that, I mean, w one thing we could do is suggest that people who wanted to navigate to the presentation could do it and then they'd be on the site anyway. Mm -hmm. And I think for people who have trouble seeing, being able to, to read along on their phone would be another, another avenue for, for people to be able to, you know, interface with the material and know what's going on. I would just say, if you want me to say something, just tell me exactly what you want me to say and, and I can include that in there. Well, this might be a good opportunity for Laura, Ooh. since uh, she's been advocating for that, um, to get up right up at the beginning of the meeting and uh, mention that after some other preliminary comments we're having. So maybe do a slide about um, featuring the uh, website homepage, and then you could point people exactly where they need to go to get on the presentation. Oh, that would be perfect, right. Yeah. Okay. Just tell me where you want to be inserted, and I will make sure So that I will, up, I'll be updating the presentation anyway. Okay. And we'll add a slide on great. with the homepage. Great. I had one other, th I know Brian brought up last time, mm -hmm. you know, making sure that we're communicating with people who are coming in to vote, the difference between like voting for the bond and actually borrowing <laughs> that amount of money. So what is in place for people who maybe don't make it to town meeting, but are then coming in and voting? So part of the reason for the presentations tonight was to give voters that may be voting now or on Tuesday and not at the t or town meeting. This, this is <laughs> this that, is and I, okay. I'd like to reach out to MCTV and ask that to play this a couple of extra times if the schedule allows. Okay, wonderful, thank you. Uh, <coughs> Go ahead. What print material are we imagining making available? We have copies of the warning mm -hmm. and the budget. And the budget, yeah. not the full town report. Correct. Could there be a few sets of the full town report um, yes. available? Yes, we'll have a few. A few. A very few. I know it's a, it's a lot of paper. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that would be a great thing to point to on the website if we're going to do that. Right. Um, yeah. In that slide, and mm -hmm. so people can you know, see exactly where to find mm -hmm. it. Um, yeah. They could certainly bring it right up on their electronic devices. Mm -hmm. sure. Um, I would like to maybe talk with you further, Kathleen, about um, displays for water and our, um, I, I would like to help maybe set this up or uh, assist with the setup of like our bank window display. Um, 
some of the pictures and materials, we saved all those, right, from mm -hmm. the water. Mm -hmm. I would like to maybe figure out a way to display those because we're having refreshments again. We are, is it Mesa? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and I hope maybe when people, maybe we could even put them in that hallway, like we, you enter the door and you kind of walk down that hallway. Um, Although I, there's not a lot of room there. So I was going to suggest that we avoid actually putting any displays in that corridor because it congests that, you know, like, and that we actually move everybody to the cafeteria and we just use the tables that are in the cafeteria. So I would... That's, that's a really good idea. And that brings me to a thought that Bill Kernan had done... Um, a rotating display of pictures and such. I wonder if we can add to that and just put it on the monitor in that, uh, in the cafeteria. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a monitor there. Yep. Yep. Yeah, there's a monitor there. The, yeah, his oh. add to his, um, yeah, mm -hmm. that would be great. Mm -hmm. So. That would really simplify things for everyone if we could just have it on a, a flash drive no. and present it that way. Can we still do some boards like for the adaptive reuse and um, some of the materials from the water? And I'm happy to come help set some of this stuff up. So I'll connect with you. Um, what was the other big? Oh, flood resiliency. I don't know that we have anything really for that. We have some aerial shots and diagrams of where the work is going to take place. It could go in the display. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of groups, you know, t uh, committees and agencies that like to do display too. So um, there, there could be a lot going on that just needs to get managed and coordinated with Anne. Okay. Um, I'm glad we have childcare this year. Yeah. Yeah, that's exciting. Mm -hmm. So what else do we need to so one thing I was thinking about today is I picked my daughter up from school early because she wasn't feeling well and the amount of sickness going around my <laughs> place of work <coughs> right now. Mm -hmm. um, trying to be careful and get through next week. <laughs> but um, Is this a germ-free <laughs> warning? <laughs> we, uh, uh, in the event? In the event, we should maybe have a backup, backup plan just... <laughs> Make sure that everybody is <laughs> fairly well versed enough in the presentation and the slides. Oh, I thought you were going to say well, you know, meaning <laughs> no sickness. You all know. Well, that's what I'm aiming for. I figure Wednesday morning. Who can I call in sick for? Yeah. <laughs> no. So, um, anyway. Wise. Wise advice. Um, just mm -hmm. anything you can do to back up in the event that someone's not well. Oh, we have a, a really flexible group, and you've all stepped right up um, yeah. for your pieces. You'll be fine. I'm sure it won't be an issue, but just, just another. Yeah. Okay. So anything else we need to talk about, prepare for any other questions related to next Monday night? Good. Good. All right. Thank you, Susan. Thank you. Uh, year to date budget reports, general fund, water fund, wastewater fund, and equipment fund. Really no update uh, from our last uh, reports. These are the end of January uh, budget reports, 58% of the fiscal year. All funds are on track overall. Um, still uh, anxiously awaiting the results of the winter and the salt budget at this at uh, January 31 we had spent a hundred and thirty three thousand dollars on salt compared to hundred and twenty six thousand dollars last year um, and as Bill Kernan noted uh, we went into the winter last year with a full store we did not do that this year so more to follow and uh, same with all of the rest of the funds uh, in good shape, uh, including in the equipment fund. As you may recall, last year we had some expensive repairs. Uh, this year we're more um, consistent hey, and on budget. Kathleen, you know, on line 21, the newsletter, what is that? 
Is that what? That is, it should be renamed Public Outreach. That is the website. Okay. Yeah. So that's our yearly uh, maintenance fee for the website. So we didn't have any last year? It looks like, or maybe that, it was. It, an, it was maybe it was, it was a, a later spot. period. And so this is um, as of January 31st. Maybe that bill wasn't paid at that point. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Um, so, does anyone have any questions, for Kathleen, on the status of the funds? Uh, any comments? Uh, there was something else, but. Oh, um, for the water fund, you know, so the meters, um, mm -hmm. it looks like are we done with installation of meters, the new meters at this point? Pretty close, but not 100% complete. So meter sales, is that so meter sales, uh, you're talking about on the revenue side? On the revenue side, yeah. So that is when a new residence or business is, uh, comes online, they buy a, a meter through the town. Okay. That's what That's that, what that is. is. Okay. Yeah. Like a new, a new one. A new home or business. Yeah. Okay. okay. Any other questions? No. Thank you, Kathleen. I appreciate it. All right, uh, select board retreat, uh, review of the draft agenda. Since this was published, Victor uh, reached out and asked that we include um, climate uh, discussion um, following up on the Energy Committee's uh, presentation at the last meeting. One thing I was thinking about after um, the ACSD meeting last night and learning that uh, the superintendent is a, one of the top three candidates for a position in Burlington, that I wanted to maybe, and I know Victor had mentioned this um, a month or so ago, uh, more of a presence in the school, um, so maybe if there's, I know we have a huge list and long agenda, but it, it may be an appropriate time, depending on how that situation evolves, to be more aware of what's going on with the district mm -hmm. given that situation. So, um, yeah, well, I think um, as a college, um, because the college really does have the technical expertise to address the problem of climate change and of, 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 the, um, of the crisis that, that um, and I think um, this drew out of the, the concern that um, <coughs> the college and town really need to collaborate in having some kind of uh, plan of how, how are we going to deal with the current crisis and um, uh, uh, as I say they, they have um, the resources um, uh, that the town really needs and, and they seem to be quite willing to provide them so so I think that probably um, after town meeting that would be the place to start um, and uh, I know uh, Lori Patton is very eager to engage in this, so I think it would be uh, an opportunity for us. But okay. but it would go down. I mean, I, I think mm -hmm. it, I think part of the problem of, of the whole question of of the environmental crisis is the fact that um, people don't know about it, or they really haven't really got it into their heads. So it's an education process, obviously, and that would go down into the schools, I suppose. Yeah. Okay. 
So we're scheduled for um, retreat on Tuesday the 17th. That's still good with everyone? Is that March? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Tuesday the 17th. So we have a busy month. That's St. Patrick's Day, right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> good. You're coming, in, you're coming in with your jacket. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's a big business day. Oh, <laughs> yeah, of course. Praise the Lord. <laughs> so we have um, town meeting the 2nd, regular select board the 10th, retreat the 17th, and then regular select board again on the 24th. So is there anything else we should discuss? Um, the meeting schedule, we'll talk about the meeting schedule at the retreat. This is just a draft for review, correct? Right. Uh, just one thing I wanted to highlight uh, based on an idea from one of my colleagues in the northern part of the state. I'm suggesting that we start the budget review at the select board level a little bit earlier this year uh, in November, uh, scheduling some time for review before your regularly scheduled meeting. So it's coming in at 4.30 focusing for two hours on the budget exclusively and then go into your regular business meeting. That will get us uh, in a good position going into December in the busy holiday season. Okay. That's a good idea. Sounds good. Great. I'll miss it. You can come. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, Every other Tuesday night, she'd be standing out there waiting for Brian to pick her up, right? <laughs> okay. Any other comments on the retreat? Good. Okay. Um, approval of the check warrants. Victor. Yes. Um, okay. I move that we approve uh, total expenditures in the amount of $472,130.10. Uh, consisting of um, of um, uh, three hundred sixty one thousand one hundred seventy three dollars and fifty seven cents in accounts payable, and um, one hundred ten thousand nine hundred fifty six dollars and fifty three cents in payroll um, for the period February twelfth uh, two thousand twenty through February twenty sixth two thousand twenty. Second. Thank you, Farhad. Thank you, Victor. Any questions? Good. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Town manager's report. I don't have anything to add. Okay. Yep. Great. I thought the Cross Street Bridge summary was great. Thank you for keeping us up to date on that. Wonderful. Okay, board member concerns. Lindsay. I don't have anything at this time. Thank you. Victor? Mm. No? Oh my goodness, I have some love. <laughs> um, so I just want to say thank you to my fellow select board members. Well, I was salivating. Uh, so I, um, I know, <laughs> please pass them down. <laughs> 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 oh, it's going to fall in my pocket. Um, I'll send one down to Kathy. Um, yeah, um, uh, this one's for Jim. Uh, okay. I, I would like to express a, <laughs> a concern or just a heartfelt wish that um, Delora, I, I think um, we'll miss you and I think what you've brought to the select board is a wonderful sense of decency and compassion and um, thank you for it. Thank you, Victor. And I appreciated um, our time together last week and, and I know that we'll have another chance to be recognized at town meeting, and I appreciate that. I really have enjoyed my work on the board, and I will still be involved in the work of the board, just on the other side of the table. <laughs> so I look forward to continuing to see you um, and reporting on that work. I think I'm in denial that this, this is your last official meeting. I know, I know. Yeah, I know yeah. people ask me, what will I do with all my free time? And I say, do you know me? So Great. Thank you, Laura. You're welcome. Uh, okay. Uh, I think uh, 
losing a loved one is pretty hard, and mm -hmm. losing a family member who is loved one is even harder, and losing a father is heartbreaking, and losing two people in the same family within a week, it's unimaginable. So yeah. I don't know what Brian and Nan's going through. Mm -hmm. I have my heartfelt condolences to them. Um, hope uh, our sympathies, our thoughts, and healing prayers for them. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing I want to say. The second thing about Laura, thank you so much for sitting with us for the past three years. Um, I look up to you as a mentor. Uh, your passion is unimaginable, I think. It's, <laughs> it's, uh, so thank you for being with us today, and I hope uh, we are, you stay connected. And the third thing about, uh, one of the, I wanted to ask you, did, uh, Brian mentioned that you and Brian would try to meet with the MREMs? Yes. Uh, did you? Heather, Brian, and I met with Middlebury Regional EMS, and they uh, assured us that they are in good financial stead on the everyday operating uh, of their um, entity but we're in urgent need of a couple of ambulances. Um, their capital planning has not been what it could be, um, and they're finding themselves um, in urgent need of two ambulances. So uh, based on that meeting, they sent us uh, their current audit uh, and a capital replacement plan, which is part of the town meeting presentation Sorry, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. In included in your packet. So I had a, some more people approach us. Uh, I don't know if anybody else has been approached about, uh, they're showing concern that uh, it's, it's the, the biggest thing is the jump from 21 to $84,000. Right. And I had another agency who approached me and said, can we do that too? Can we do quadruple on what we ask? Yep. Is it okay to do that? And I said, well, I, I can't advise you on what you should do or not, but uh, mm -hmm. so people are concerned about that. Um, and uh, they, they want to know what, the, uh, another question was asked was, uh, once you approve that 82, 84,000, whatever it is, uh, would that be consistent every year? Would that continue on every year? Or is yeah, this a one time thing? The $84,000 yeah. they're asking, is that a one-time thing or is that a... Well, no, no, their, their budget sets a precedent, has, right? has, has increased by 300%. Yeah. Mm -hmm. of the budget ask the, that, they're ask, uh, that they're asking, and, uh, and I think this is a, a regular, in other words, it's a jump. Yeah. They continue. So uh, to that, uh, two things. We asked uh, to meet with them earlier, much earlier, at the end of June, going into next year's budget season uh, to be better informed. And also, the board can, with any public service, a, uh, social service agency, review their request annually and uh, review the amount. Mm -hmm. So it was a good um, productive meeting, I think, with them the other day, and um, we had some suggestions for them um, moving forward. And um, I, I think, I think, as we go forward, we'll see some improvement in in their planning, and and hopefully, we'll experience a jump like this. But but the question is, does it go back? We are back? approving eighty four. It's going to stay at eighty four. Unless something, it's not going to go down, right, on, on its own? I wouldn't imagine so. Their request. Yeah. Yeah. Like, is this a one-time request just to get them out of the... Right. Mm -hmm. no, they no. have a significant no. um, mm -hmm. rolling stock. Each ambulance is about $250,000 fully equipped. Mm -hmm. And they don't have, they have like $42,000, Heather, in the bank for the, those pieces of equipment. They have four ambulances. Yeah, mm -hmm. or three in a, in a van, or anyway, some combination of four mm -hmm. ambulances. Well, I, I think that the, the 
problem is is that they haven't really ever had an accurate picture of what their ongoing expenses are. And I mean, it seems to me just as we do with fire, fire trucks and uh, 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 police cruisers and so on, you, you plan ahead and you recognize that um, and they haven't been doing this now. Um, uh, they're obviously setting up plan to do this in future. However, what it, uh, it seems to me that this request is not simply uh, paying off expenses and they'll go back down. It seems to me that this is really an indication of what they will be asking in, in, in the future for this service. And it's a very important service, obviously. Uh, what they need is a financial manager. I think they do their, they provide the service that they give very well, but um, They've been deficient in financial management. Uh, I think this would be, and uh, maybe we should discuss this at the retreat about what our standards should be, how we fund these agencies. Again, it'll come up at the town meeting. I'm sure that's what you're saying because you've heard it, and I'm sure when this item comes up, people will maybe bringing that up. You know, how do, how do we arrive at the totals that we do, and then we will have to respond to that again about what our protocol, our current <coughs> protocol has been and how we will look at that again. So, so that, mm -hmm. this is our policy that you included here, mm -hmm. correct? Um, An excerpt, yeah. Yeah. Um, it still won't satisfy right. the social service agency that sees this increase and then wants to also ex exponentially increase their ask. Okay. Mm -hmm. Were you all set, Brian? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Nick? I feel like you've taken everything I was going to <laughs> say. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I have heard on this this mm -hmm. MRAMS thing. And um, say once again, this is not a. Uh, the, the, the people who respond are phenomenal professionals at the highest level. And, and we need them, we value them. But uh, the point that's coming up is once again, this is an organization that will be the largest recipient funding that's not under our town manager's oversight and so if this does get passed I think we owe it to the community to closely scrutinize this going forward I mean somebody pointed out one other interesting little topic I hadn't thought about but you know the taxpayers pay for the fire department and if we have a fire we need we need them they respond they do their job we don't get a bill if we need the police which taxpayers fund they respond, mm -hmm. they do their job, we don't get a bill. What, what would happen, you know, is there, is there something that we as, as taxpayers could get in return for this? You know, maybe a discount on a transport if we need it, um, as opposed to getting that big bill. Um, it's, it seems there's a lot of discussions and it's, in my mind I see some things even in resource allocation <coughs> that make me wonder what, what about this. So. I think if this does pass, we need to, we owe it to the community to really look at this closely because it could lead to some of those situations also that, that Fahad's talked about. So um, I've, I've said my piece on this one here and, uh, and that's where that is. But um, second of all, of course, I couldn't have said better what you said for Brian and Nan. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I, th I think we all s sank really low when we got the word there. You know, there was. Um, at least we were passing around the word to each other and there was this, this silence that just kind of held over all of us because well, we're all friends and that's, that, that's a hard hit. Um, then going away, it's like, swan song, Laura, it's been an honor serving with you and um, really your dedication and your commitment. I mean, people know you do that, but they don't know all of what you do. I mean, you've just been a fantastic part of this board, so it's been great serving with you. Thank you, Thank Nick. You for okay. Thanks for sitting next to me tonight. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will certainly miss you. Mm -hmm. So thank you mm -hmm. for everything. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, you guys have said what you said about Brian and uh, it's tough. So my heart goes out to both of them, this whole family. Mm -hmm. All right. 
Um, thank you. Executive session, briefly. Okay. Uh, Laura, would you like to take uh -huh. us in? Um, in accordance with Vermont's open meeting law, the following, um, well, let's see, I move um, that the board find that premature general knowledge of the consideration of legal matters would clearly place the select board at a substantial disadvantage because the select board risks disclosing its litigation strategy if it discusses the legal matters in public. Second. Thank you, Farhan. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 I further move that the board enter into executive session to discuss legal matters under the provisions of Title I, Section 313A1 of the Vermont Statutes. Second. Thank you, Nick. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. So we're entering executive session at 842.